Oh, there's so many things, man. Wait, Black when is Black Panther releasing in SOM? When? 10th of February? Really? I mean, it's sort of expected at this point, right? Classic seasonal mastery Black Wind Lair launches February 10th. Blizzard is released in Sweet the available for classic seasonal mastery. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> Black Wind Lair will be available for seasonal mastery on the February 10th, 2022. On February 10th at 3 p.m. PST. Wait, what is that EU time? It's midnight. Great. Um The ominous depths of Black Wind Lair will be waiting for those brave enough to master its dangers. Gather your staunch fist, staunches ally. What is wrong with my reading Thank abilities? You kind, oh sir. my god. And prepare to undertake a treacherous journey into the heart of a mountain to reap the treasures within. With some new twists in Season of Mastery. Raid bosses 8, level 60, burning steppies. I like that they say this. It's like we don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, how to get there? Wait. Oh, it's like a guide? Blackbird Lair is located at the very height of Blackbird Spire. You can read the you can enter the mountain from the either burning steppies or through Syrian Gorge. One does not simply walk into Blackbird Lair. <laughs> That's a good reference. I like that. Uh, <laughs> That's actually funny. Uh, one must become attuned first. Head towards Blackrod Spire and take the passageway just to the right. Here, you will fight your way through some of the Scar Shield legions to get the Scar Shield Quar Quartermaster. Once you kill him, you'll be able to loot the Black Hand's Command. Right clicking it will give you the quest Black Hand's Command. This quest will send you to the upper Blackrock Spire to access the Orb of Command le uh, located behind General Dracosat's throne. You can either have a group distract him or just kill him and get out of the way. I actually thought you had to kill him. I, I, I genuinely thought you had to kill him to be able to do the thing, but I guess not. Uh, you'll be able to enter... At the, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Do we see the changes to the bosses? Oh my gosh. Razor Gore is tasked with protecting and cultivating various black dragon eggs secreted away in Blackwind Lair. Having confronted Nefarian and losing him in battle, Veldstress has been corrupted and forced to fight Nefarian's enemies. Okay, so they're giving lore. I really want to know what they've done to Nefarian, what they've done to Ebonrock and Flamegore, the loot pinatas, and what they've done to Broadblood Lash Lair, because those bosses were not changed when we did it on PTR. Well, okay, guys. Well, uh, Black Moon Lair is coming out in, in, uh, on the 10th of February. You know what's messed up, man? I don't even have a level 60 in SOM. I'm trying to level my Hunter now, right? But, like, I have a 60 character, but that's hardcore. Maybe we could talk the hardcore community and the hardcore guild into trying a black one layer hardcore. That could be quite fun. You know? Do you know what uh, do you know why Black Air releases on the 10th of February? Guess what releases on the 11th? I don't know. What releases on the 11th? Oh Lost Ark! <laughs> of course it does. Wait, so in the 11th is Lost Ark. We'll probably do a Lost Ark uh, stream on the release, right? I, I think so, man. I think so. Was that the boosting thing? Yeah, so I think a lot of people probably have talked about this, but um, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a classic Andy. Um, but the retail community, the boosting community has actually been prohibited now. That is a long time coming, isn't it? I remember when I used to play Shadowlands when it first came out and also BFA. I played BFA a little bit as well. The only thing you would see, the only thing you would see is just boost, like people selling boosts in general chat and in trade chat as well. It was getting spammed and just like littered with boosting communities selling boosts. It was actually unbelievable. You couldn't read anything in the trade chat. Um, I think this is good. This is good. Um, yeah, I believe... Wait, what is this? So, I believe cross run boosting is disallowed until, unless I read it wrong. Organizations who disruptively advertise across all realms and establish escrow services are the primary target of this policy update. Guilds and individuals who are inviting players from another realm to join them in traditional game activities in exchange for gold are allowed, as they were before. 
Okay. Would that indulge uh, things like gold DGP runs where players benefit financially off of people? This is huge in TBC. You know, that depends on the definition of financially. If it is an exchange of gold only within a middleman entity, then it sounds like the same sort of guild activities players have been doing enjoying for 17 years, which are not the focus of this policy update. Okay, so the policy update is more so just focused towards the communities that sell boosts, right? It's, it's There's a massive amount of communities that has gotten boosted for this, right? But but yeah, I, I, I think this is a great thing, right? Like, I mean, and this is good. I feel like the boosting boosting thing is like, it's not that great, right? It's not that great for the game. Obviously, I, I don't play retail a whole bunch, but I do remember when I did play retail that it was pretty much impossible to to get groups for anything or to even talk to people in trade chat or any, in any looking for group systems, right? Because it was just littered with community boosts. So yeah, I mean, it, I think that's definitely a step in the, in the right direction. I agree. I, I, I think so for sure. As the conditions change by which various entities operate in World of Warcraft, we are compelled to update our policies to further our goal of making the gameplay experience as fair and as welcoming as possible. Since we last updated our policies, we have found that increasing disturbance of the gameplay experience has been caused by organizations excessively advertising various non-traditional -tra services in-game. Yeah. As of today, we will now prohibit organizations who offer boosting, matchmaking, escrow, and other non-traditional services, including those offered for gold. All of Warcraft accounts found to be in violation of this policy are subject to account uh, actions. Those actions can include warnings, account suspensions, and, if necessary, permanent closure of the disruptive World of Warcraft accounts. Organizations operating across multiple realms and excessively advertising non-traditional in-game sales are, are contrary to the terms and conditions of the Blizzard End User Agreement. Okay. The policy update does not restrict individuals of guilds from using the provided in-game tools, trade channel, or buy, in, uh, or buy sell in-game items or activities for in-game currencies. However, boosting communities, especially those who operate across realms, are no longer permitted. We all urge all such organizations to cease doing business in World of Warcraft immediately in order to maintain in uninterrupted access to the game. That is pretty big. It's a long time coming as well, right? It's a very, very long time coming, for sure. Loki wish gold DGBs were loot ban were banned too. Yeah, but I, I think if they go into that, I, I think this is a step in the right direction, right? Because obviously they can't like ban every single person, like selling like something to a specific one person for like gold, right? But they can ban the boosting communities, which is like a major thing, right? So it's definitely a step into the right direction for creating a, like a better community, right? Like generally speaking. Right? I, you, you can't be like, oh, you can't invite your friend and then your friend pays you 10k gold to join the raid, right? You can't really do that. But like, doing this is a, is a big blow for sure towards the boosting community. Uh, I, I think so. Um, yeah, I definitely do think so for sure. Um, level your access while reacting? Uh, it's fine. I, I'm just going to do that off stream later. It's okay. Don't worry about that. What really pisses me off is the thing that they still boost in store still. I, I, I think the major thing for the boosting communities is like... It's a big thing with like, you know, boosting M plus and boosting raids to get ready for that stuff and everything like that, right? But I do understand what you say about that for sure. Uh, this is like even a bigger thing. Yeah, I know. This is the big thing though. This is the massive thing that they, that they have uh, announced. Cross faction instances. In retail. <clears throat> so they're actually making it so that you can play in instances and in dungeons cross faction now in retail not in not in tbc not in classic in retail okay for years now many players have questioned whether the rules restricting communication and cooperation between classic uh, alliance and horde needs to be absolute the faction divide could uh, keep close friends from playing together or cause players to feel that their faction leaves them with the far fewer opportunities to pursue their favorite group content sorry about that this is only retail not classic but those downsides have been justified in order to preserve a central element of the warcraft universe it all began with the game title warcraft orcs and humans right but to quote a one-time warcraft chief to the horde times change 
it's really a um like this may, maybe a lot of people are not gonna agree too much with this and a lot of people are gonna be angry about this but like i don't think it's that bad like I, if you can like imagine like this right like I, I i know this for sure because when i did play retail a little bit um and i played alliance for a little while right like it was literally impossible to get anything at all to get together like you you could you couldn't play anything you couldn't do dungeons you couldn't do pvp the queues were long people wouldn't join the groups because everybody played horde right and if you're playing horde you're just like you're chilling you're fucking you're hanging out dude there's groups everywhere man everybody's like having a good time and it's good right so i understand it from a gameplay perspective it makes it so that you can play with more people and it makes it so that you're not really tight to like a specific faction in retail to play. And let's be honest, guys. How much does like factions really matter in retail? Every single boss, every single like thing that happens in retail is about the Horde and Alliance working together. Like it's, it's, it's not like in classic words, like, you know, I'm a smork, I'm gonna kill Alliance, right? And Alliance is like, oh, I'm gonna go hang out in Gold Shower and hang out with hot babes. It's like, you know, it, it's not, the same game anymore right it's it's not in the same way well pvp is definitely a thing yeah i i, I do get what you mean with it though like it, it does it still doesn't make sense like it, it, in that regard but i think this is specifically targeted towards like instances um like it, dungeons and uh pvp and stuff like that right and raids as well i would assume um but yeah it, it's really hard for me to give like a up, like a really subjective and objective maybe even even either like uh, opinion on this because i haven't played retail for a long time so maybe my viewpoints on this is a little bit skewed right but i don't think necessarily it's a really really bad thing for um for retail necessarily at least not in the current iteration of how the game looks like right because it sucks playing a game and not being able to play the game you know why do you think i moved my shaman and my warrior away from Earthshaker in Classic WoW. Because I couldn't play with people. There was no there was no groups. There was no queues. There's no one to play with. It's depressing playing an MMO without being able to play with other people. So in that regard, I think it's pretty good. But it doesn't make sense. It, it, it's still weird for my old brain. That's I'm still stuck in the past, right? In a way. I mean, I play Classic as my main game. So you can figure. But... It's like weird, right? It would be weird to do a dungeon as an orc and group up with a dwarf. It's weird, right? But from a gameplay perspective, it makes sense. It really, I think it does. Um, this is a lot of read. Let, let's just see what this is. I'm pleased to announce that we are working on adding the ability for Alliance and Horde players to form a pre-made party together for dungeons, raids, and raided PvP. There has been two decades worth of code and content crafted with the assumption that parties are, uh, only have players for a single faction. And while we want this to be a feature available as soon as possible, the extent of the change means that we don't be, we couldn't be ready in terms of the upcoming Eternity's End content update. Instead, we're planning to test it and release it as a part of the subsequent 9.2.5 update. We're eager to hear your feedback about the details we're sharing today and on the details of our implementation when this feature becomes available to the public test realm following the release of Eternity's End. Okay. So it's something that's going to take a while for sure. Uh, a lot of horde groups will just enable a horde only anyway. Yeah, perhaps. You can just make a pure horde uh, if you don't like the idea. Yeah, I mean, maybe a lot of people are not going to like this. I mean, and I, and I get that. But I, I, I just think in the current iteration of how retail is and how retail operates, this sort of does make sense. I think it does. You know, in, in, a, in a way. But it's still weird to play with Horde and Alliance in a way. But it's going to make more people able to play the game. But, yeah. There's a lot of people in retail that don't care. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I could imagine Reddit and uh, Twitter definitely being in a bi big shitstorm right now about this. Uh, dungeons, raids, and raided PVGs at the center of the most compelling arguments for relaxing in the faction of Divide. Uh, make this an opt-in feature as much as possible. In terms of the world, uh, there are decades of animosity to overcome. While we are excited to make offer players the choice to reach across to the faction Divide and incorporate to overcome common foes, 
We know that there are many who will react warily to this change, and we do not want to override those preferences. This is about increasing options for players. Okay. Players will be able to directly invite players of the opposite faction to a party if you have a battle tag or a real ID friendship, or if you are members of a cross-faction WoW community. Pre-made groups to the group finder listing for dungeons uh, will be open to applicants of both factions. To the group leader may choose to restrict the listing of the same faction. Okay, so you can choose to not do it. I think that's good. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to, if you just want to play alliance only, that's fine. Yeah. Guilds will remain single faction. Oh, yeah, I like that. And random matchmate activities like heroic dungeons, skirmishes, and run battle will remain same faction. Okay, that's good. Um, but there's this faction driven pressure about random groups and avoid common uh, the opt in. Um, okay, well, so it is like a thing you have to choose to do then. Okay. And you're just talking a little bit about the lore and the RP while they're doing it. And it's also going to be for legacy, uh, legacy st stuff as well. They're considering making cross-faction guilds. They're taking it slow. I think you really have to take it slow with these things. And I think... I think, generally speaking, for retail, this is not a bad idea. I actually don't think it's a super bad idea. The Gigacid race, Pandaren, is years ahead of this change. Okay, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But no, I, I like this, guys. I like this. I think, generally speaking, this is not a bad idea. And this is something that could probably make it so a lot of people can actually play the game i think so i do think though if this was implemented in like classic tpc or wrath classic that would be very bad but for the retail i can see the usage and i can see the reason for why but it does feel a little bit weird <laughs> but you know we'll see how it goes man we'll see how it is well th there that is boys that's an interesting thing. I, I guess we'll see more like how whenever they decide to add more things to it or talk more about it, how it's going to be implemented. And heck, maybe in the future I'll be playing more retail. I don't know, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, watch this. What is this? Alliance and Horde separation mechanically in game. That's just a pillar of what makes Warcraft Warcraft. It's part of why we have the competing cries of for the Alliance and for the Horde. But Alliance and Horde uniting and formally grouping together and partying together it is not a <laughs> oh my god. Good one, Ian. Good one, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is so good. Wait, let me look at the comments. Alliance is there some good comments there? That dude, this video only has 1.6k views. That's a good one though. And I'm the age of chaos. Two factions were very good friends and powerful allies. Friend craft, friendly orcs and you. <laughs> that's so good. All right, guys, I'll link it in the chat. Yeah, I'll link it in the chat. <laughs> 